What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to my review of the Innova Champion Toro. Happy to have this one going into the playlist with over 300 other disc reviews. If you guys like the channel and you like the content, please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. The likes, the comments, all that stuff means a lot to me. And also, a big shout-out to today's sponsor, the Disc Golf Depot here in Portland, for hooking me up with this beautiful pair of Toros to test and review. So go to DiscGolfDepot.com for more information. They have an online shop you can order from as well now. And also... Of course, if you're in the Portland area, you got to go pop into the depot. Plastic heaven over there. Calvin Heinberg, five-time DGPT event champion, uh, champion Toro. And it's interesting to see a stock signature disc for a non-world champion from Innova, because for the longest time, being world champion was the only way to get yourself a uh, you know an actual stock signature disc like this, not a tour series disc. Unless you were uh, in the FPO division, then you didn't get it either. Um, but then also, you know, now they're kind of uh, opening that up a little bit, probably to try to help support and hold on to Calvin Heinberg, who is clearly by far their best player uh, on the team. I mean, arguably the best player in the world right now. I think he's leading the tour points and all that kind of stuff. Cool to see them support uh, Calvin, but also a little bit interesting. Noteworthy, in my in my opinion. 4213 are the flight numbers on this one. I'm trying to figure out which one of these films better. I think this blue one does, so we're going to get rid of the pink one. They perform basically, uh, essentially the same out there on the course. 4213 are the flight numbers on this disc, and I would say just put a zero where the one is, and I'm pretty much fine with the flight numbers. 4203, I think that would make more sense. I've never really understood the, the positive number, but... I don't know. This thing is definitely beefy. It doesn't want to fly. It wants to get down to the ground as fast as possible, but it's not something that comes out of the hand and just rips left immediately, in my experience, either. So, you can hopefully see, when you take a look at the design of this thing, that it's obviously got that very zone shape to it. We're going to put it next to a zone, of course, in just a minute here. I believe that's essentially what they were going for, was Innova zone, more or less. And, and to be perfectly honest, I think that's probably why they put the one there, is they're trying to represent it as more overstable than the zone, um, to be to be honest. And then, you know, of course, Discraft one-ups one them with the Zone OS and the Ludicrous 5 for Fade on that disc. We'll get to that in just a little while here, but we're going to compare it to a, a regular zone as well. It's definitely got a very nice flat top, and it does seem to have like a really subtle kind of almost an implied thumb track it's really hard to get to, to come up on camera and very hard to see and really not all that perceptible but you feel it maybe a little bit when you got this thing in your forehand grip for me like it's it's got a little bit of a just a little bit extra meat there kind of like slopes up just a hair out towards that outside edge there but these are both 173 and a half, 174 or so. They're relatively small diameter, so I don't think they can get up too much higher than that. Let's take a look at it next to a plethora of options. Starting with the AVR X3. And this was kind of the previous attempt to provide a zone type disc for the Innova lineup and Innova throwers, as far as I'm concerned. This is a DX AVR X3, of course. It's going in, it is in my uh, Overstable Approach Disc collection. I wish it was a star or a champion, but, you know, you work with what you got. I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it just to have one represented. I reviewed this disc when it hit the market, so there's plenty of information out there about the AVR X3. I just wanted to have one in, in the collection, but side by side, if I line up the parting lines there... You can see the AVR X3 is a little bit deeper, it's a little bit slower, it's not as overstable, it's got a more rounded top, not as mean, but still plenty overstable, especially in the uh, more premium plastics. Still could easily get the job done for that overstable approach disc slot in your bag, depending on who you are. Moving on, we have an actual zone here. This is a Tour Series Swirl Flex Zone. Chandler hooked me up with this when we were out filming his Chandler Fry Surge review. You can check that out in the playlist as well if you're interested. And here it is next to his own. I'm going to try to do my best to get these two lined up. But it's always tricky. You know, the perspective issue is always a problem here. So don't really take it. You know, you can see as I kind of slide these back and forth, they start to look different sizes and stuff. But lining it up the best I can, you can see this that they're very, very similar. But the Toro has a little bit of a different vibe to it. And it's, it seems a little bit lower profile as well when I put them flat on the table there. You can, of course, look up PDGA specs if you want to nerd out on it that much, but that's a good look at it next to an actual Discraft Zoom. Next, we have a disc in my inventory most likely to cover this slot for me if I wanted a really overstable approach disc, and this thing does get carried sometimes. 
NSH Custom Discs, Mr. Putt. This is one of my go-to throwers in this slot, and this thing is just unlike anything else. Crazy board flat, flat-sided, big, chunky, chunky rim to it. Best forehand roller disc of all time, especially on, like, approaches and stuff. Just amazing. And we can put it up next to this guy. And Mr. Putt, every bit as mean and overstable as the Toro, if not more so. It probably flies a little bit less even. But there it is. You can see the uh, difference in how flat it is. The Toro is quite close, though. Almost as, almost as perfectly flat as that. And then, of course, last but not least, you saw the Toro, probably heard about the Toro in my Zone OS video, I believe, so why not reciprocate here? Once again, 4215. You know, it seems like they're kind of like, oh, this is more overstable than a Zone. Oh, well, this is more, you know, this is <laughs> that's kind of the, the vibe I get from these flight numbers. It's kind of like doing a little bit of fencing on the flight numbers, but... Zone OS, a bit more overstable. I would probably just go 4204 for that, 4203 for this, and call it good. I think it would be much more accurate all around. And here it is next to the Zone OS. Crazy puddle top on the Zone OS. Just absurd. Um, and also more squared on that top edge. Really not very zone-ish at all, honestly. It's got a very different shape to it and feel in the hand and stuff, in my opinion. But that's the Zone OS. Those are your side-by-sides. All in all, of course, you know, the Champion Plastic. Amazing blend on the market. Extremely tough. Very, very well documented. I don't really need to go too far into the Champion Plastic. But this one is nice. It's, this newer run, Champion Plastic, is very grippy in comparison to the older runs. So we looked at it next to some other options. We talked about the flight numbers, the plastic, the feel in the hand. Nothing left to do but take a look at the rest of the flight footage, and you're going to get the idea really quick. Very beefy disc, but not complete meat hook where you can't throw it at all. You know, throwing more flat to Anheuser releases, it will fly a little bit. It doesn't drop off the line so dramatically that you can't throw it and get it to fly a little bit before that fade kicks in. But it does auto-correct and kind of control the distance quite well. Just because it doesn't want to fly. It's overstable and it wants to push down to the ground. If you throw it low, it's not going anywhere, which is a good attribute for an approach disc. You can throw it low and know that it's going to kind of automatically control that distance so you don't have to worry about blowing past the basket or any of those type of things. And those are exactly why you'd carry a disc like this. Great for forehands, backhands, overstable approaches, windy approaches, all those type of things you'd use one of the most critical discs in your bag, the Overstable Approach Disc 4, the Toro excels at all of them. And out of the, you know, the Zone OS and the regular Zone, the AVR X3, I'd probably go with the Toro over all of those options. Um, I just feel like it feels really nice in the hand. It's very consistent. These two fly exactly the same based on my testing. Really effective forehand and backhand. And really does everything you want it to do in that Overstable Approach Disc realm. If you are a low arm speed player and you need an overstable approach disc, this one might be a little bit too beefy for you. You know, if you don't throw very far and you like to throw really flippy discs or, you know, your go-to driver or something like a Mamba or something like that because you have a low arm speed, you know, no shame. I'm on the lower end of arm speed as well. I'm just really comfortable in controlling these overstable short range discs and it's the strength of my game at this point. But if you're, you know, a brand new player, you probably get away with something less overstable than this is what I'm getting at. This one's a little bit more towards the advanced player pro level in terms of its stability, and definitely one of the beefier discs that I can think of, but not completely unthrowable and ridiculous like something you might try, like a Stego or something like that. But that's my review on the Innova Champion Toro. Solid discs, really enjoyed testing, and will go into my overstable approach disc collection. I think this blue one is going to get gifted to a friend. And big thank you once again to the Disc Golf Depot for sponsoring this video. Go pop into the Depot, buy a Toro, buy something else. They got it all. Tell them I sent you. Much love to everybody out there. Big shout out to the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. I love and respect and appreciate all of you. And I will talk to you all very soon. Cheers.